Welcome to the West Ham Voice. Good morning on a Saturday morning. I hope you've all had a good week and really looking forward to the weekend coming up. I hope you've all got some good things planned. Um, and uh, not to allow West Ham United and all the non-transfer business uh, ruin your weekend. Hopefully it's not ruined your week either. Look, I've got some news on Divock Origi. Um, now, I'm not going to, I'm going to come to that in a moment, uh, but give me a few moments. I want to bring you up to date on various West Ham related uh, transfer stories or the lack of them uh, before I get on to Origi. Um, but uh, it's interesting news. So uh, I'll bring you up to date on what that is in a moment. So another week has come to an end. Uh, West Ham United still remain the only Premier League club uh, to have not yet signed a footballer in for the senior team um, in this summer transfer window. However, we finally established the six names of the players who ha we have made bids for. As you know, um, Sullivan uh, and Moyes uh, said we've put in several bids. And the six players are, well, you know, no surprises, really. We've heard about them. You know, the week before last was uh, Paulinha, Joe Paulinha of Fulham. And then this week we heard about Conor Gallagher, James Ward-Prowse, Scott McTominay, and Harry Maguire. And of course, the sixth player is Carlos Borges. So no surprises, really. Um, but uh, apart from Borges, we've had all our bids turned down. You know, and to date, Borges is the only player uh, that looks like it's about to happen. And probably by the time this video goes out on Saturday morning, you may, you know, it may be finally confirmed. It's been official that he's become a West Ham player um, for a, a rumoured uh, um, uh, fee of around £14 million. And of course, as we've now also heard, uh, we, excuse me, we finally, cat here, we finally negotiated a 30, £38 million buyback for a clause as well. Look, if uh, Borges does that well for West Ham United over the next few seasons and Man City come knocking on the door wanting to buy him back for around £38 million, then it looks like we've done pretty well with him and we would have got good service from him. So let's view the £14 million that we're paying for him as a kind of long-term loan deal. You know, if it, if it all happens. Uh, I don't know the extent of the contract. I don't know uh, what Borges will sign for you know, three years, four years or whatever. Uh, but usually uh, a player's, uh, the buyback on a player is when we decide to sell the player. So uh, if in, say, three years' time, we decide to sell him and get £38 million back for him, that's not bad business, really, to be quite honest with you. And I've heard, you know, uh, we keep hearing, we've been hearing it for the last couple of weeks, that that deal is pretty imminent. Uh, and of course, uh, the latest um, uh, transfer uh, story that we've heard relates to Harry Maguire. There have been lots of rumours about Maguire, that uh, Moyes is interested in the player, etc. And we finally heard this week that we put in a bid of around £20 million for him. Look, it's a low ball offer. Let's be honest, it is pretty low ball. But let's also be honest, every team does it. Let's not forget, Arsenal started their bidding for Declan Rice at around about £60 million, £65 million, whatever that is, uh, whatever it was. Um, look, as I've said in the previous uh, shows, I don't mind Maguire, to be quite honest with you. I think as a, as a footballer, as a defender, he's pretty decent. You know, even at the age of 30, he'll certainly give us a good couple of years of experienced uh, football. You know, a good leader, vast experience, etc. But Man United apparently have a £40 million price tag on him. And I think that's where... Uh, the problems start. And then, of course, when we look at his uh, salary of around £190,000 uh, a week, then in all honesty, you've got to say, realistically, we're not likely to put in a bit of £40 million. And also, how are we going to find uh, paying him £190,000 a week uh, when our biggest earners are earning, what, one hundred and twenty, give or take? Look, uh, in all honesty, uh, a, a true bid for Maguire, he is probably worth around 30, 35 million pounds. Let's be really honest. But uh, pursuing this deal, as I've said in other shows as well, uh, it, it's a bit weird. I don't know. And when you kind of have other players um, who can play in central defence uh, who are a lot cheaper, you know, their salaries that will be a lot less, et cetera, and younger players as well, uh, then you've got to, got to ask yourself, are we really going to allow, or is David Moyes going to be allowed to uh, spend a large chunk of the Declan Rice money 
on uh, Harry Maguire. I don't think it will happen, to be quite honest with you. Uh, uh, from what it sounds like, the way West Ham are doing their business at the moment, it sounds like we're going in with bids and then we're making a pretty quick decision uh, whether, to, whether to pursue or not. Uh, and with all the bids that we've been putting in, you know, for uh, Gallagher, for um, uh, Polina, etc., it looks like sort of systematically, one, one after another, we're kind of going, all right, that's the highest we're going, we're not going anymore. I know Polina, for example, uh, that that bid was kind of um, uh, after it was turned down, uh, he got his injury. And I guess that sort of put paid to uh, the whole issue with Polina. But Gallagher, for example, we put in a bid of around 40 million. We decided that um, uh, um, Chelsea have said it's not enough, you know, and then Pochettino's come out saying he's part of his plans, etc. And we've gone, all right, we'll move on. And it looks like even though we've kind of started our transfer business late, in the transfer window, we're kind of making pretty quick decisions. We're going, right, okay, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. Um, and it looks like a bit of a different era, um, sort of uh, approach uh, with West Ham. And I hope the Maguire thing will be the same, where we don't procrastinate, you know, we don't, Moyes doesn't keep going back and back and back. We put in a bid, it's been rejected, it's low ball. You know, we may go back and put a bigger bid in, 25 million plus add-ons, something like that. But if that gets turned down, then we should be moving away and uh, looking elsewhere. Now, there are other um, uh, things developing, aren't there? We, we kind of heard that uh, um, Aaron Creswell uh, was going to be leaving West Ham. And this is another example of maybe there's a new approach with West Ham United in buying players and selling players because we don't seem to be able to agree a deal with Wolves, you know, and it can't be that much different because apparently we're hearing rumour that, you know, there's a, we, we value him, him at around £5 million and it seems that... Um, Wolves uh, don't agree to that and they want to pay something like two and a half to three million. We're not that far off, really, are we? And I think even though at the moment it looks like a stalemate and we've been told that the player's not going to leave, I think something will get sorted out with that one. And it might be quite late in the transfer window before that happens. Look, he's likely to get something like a two year deal at Wolves. It'll be really good for him. He'll probably be given bit, uh, bigger wages as well, as I said the other day. So I think something will happen with Creswell uh, and then we'll move on and look for an alternative left back. Let's hope we don't leave it too late for all the left back um, options that we're looking at uh, to not be uh, available anymore. Um, we also hear that um, there's another per another player who kind of is back at West Ham United and he's fed up. Well, we're fed up too. Uh, Nicola Vlasic, I'm sure you've seen the um, the story that's out, you know, the uh, interview that he gave. Uh, apparently, he's really unhappy. He's really fed up. He's really he's definitely not coming back to West Ham United, etc. He was venting his spleen. But I think he's been venting his spleen at the wrong people or the wrong club. Because if you remember, when he was sent out on loan to Torino last summer, there was an agreement made that there was an option to buy the player if they wanted him uh, for, I think, around £13 million. I think that's what it was. I can't remember whether it's 13 million pounds or 13 million euros but anyway the the figure 13 is there now look after this this last season's ended torino didn't take that offer up now they're quite, they're playing low ball because they want the player for something like 9 million euros they they want to I mean, it's bad enough that we paid quite a hefty amount of money for him and still owe money uh for him as well it looks like torino are kind of reneging on uh, the deal that was agreed and are trying to get him at a very very low price look We've been subsidising his salary while he was at Torino. Um, and Torino know that by getting him on a permanent deal, they're going to have to pay his full salary or come to some kind of agreement. But then that's their problem, isn't it? It's their problem to sort of uh, sort out, you know, and if they don't want the player, then move on. And, uh, and then we'll look at, for another club to sell him to. And of course, um, uh, the, there's other players. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Ward Prowse, we've put in a £20 million bid for him. We know that's low ball as well. I think this one is likely to, to get done. And this is likely to be uh, uh, um, the, probably our second signing after Borges uh, uh, over the next few days. Look, I think we'll, it will be agreed at around £25 million pounds maybe plus add-ons, etc. Um, and I think that that deal will, will be done. I think it's less clear on uh, uh, Scott McTominay because apparently Man United value him at 45 million. This is one where I think we've kind of gone, no, we're not paying that much. I don't know what the bid was uh, for McTominay, but it looks like we made an offer. Uh, we've been told no. 
And then it looks like we're going to move on from that. So uh, I'm not so sure whether the McTominay deal will really come off. Look, if we were to pursue bids for Ward and uh, Ward Prowse and McTominay, many fans are rightly asking, well, doesn't that mean we still need a defensive midfielder? Because like men, maybe many of you, you know, McTominay is, is classed as a defensive midfielder. And yet when you see him play that role for Man United, he's not been that great at it. And then people will talk about uh, McTominay's uh, games for Scotland, where he's a bit more of a sort of a, a, a box-to-box type of midfielder. And he seems to be playing much better in, in that kind of uh, role. So if that's the case... What does it mean for West Ham United? You know, if we end up getting McTominay and Ward Prowse, um, two midfielders who are neither um, uh, sort of uh, uh, defensive midfielders, what then? Well, if you recall, David Moyes did talk about, after the Rice sale, he did talk about not necessarily getting players in um, who were going to replace Rice like for like, you know, and he talked about maybe having to play a different style, a different game, a different way of playing, etc. Look, McTominay's certainly got a good engine on him. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. You know, he's a player who who be an asset to West Ham. You know, Ward Prowse will be an asset to West Ham as well. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, maybe uh, agreeing a £45 million deal might just scupper that one in the in the same sort of way that it's kind of scu- scuppered our approach for uh, Gallagher, who now uh, Chelsea, you know, value him anything between 45 to £50 million. Pounds. Um, so... I think, you know, it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens. I think Ward Prowse will happen. Borges, as I've already mentioned, looks like he's through the door. So it depends on what happens next. You know, what other players? Now, there was that, um, you know, apparently um, Sullivan said, you know, the first three deals that uh, uh, are accepted, we that's who we'll go for. But that doesn't kind of make sense either because... We've got, we put bids in for central midfielders, you know, and then we've got Borges, who's a sort of um, a winger. And then we've got the Maguire, Maguire who's a centre-back, etc. So, you know, which three? Which three? Borges is one. Ward Prowse, I guess, will be the, the other. And then what? You know, who will be the third? Will that be it? I don't know. It seems a bit strange. Um, look, uh, I think... Um, Things will uh, progress uh, as time time goes by. Borges will be announced imminently, pretty certain of that. And uh, like I said, War Prowse will be the next one. And then let's see what else happens. I'm sure we're going to be in the market for uh, a few more players, but it will see what, what materialises. Now, I'm also sure you've heard that uh, we've got a couple of our young players who've signed extended contracts. Um, uh, uh, Freddie Potts have signed a, a three-year uh, professional extension on his on his contract, and Kamari Sw- Sw- Swire has uh, signed a two-year deal. Now Potts has already gone out on loan. We've got a couple, several uh, young players out on loan at the moment. Nathan Trot back with the Danish club uh, Vejul BK. Uh, Christian Heggy he's now on loan at Stevenage. It sounds as if maybe Kamari Swire may join him on loan there. And of course, Freddie Potts has uh, joined Wickham Wanderers on a season-long loan as well. Look, people were saying, oh, well, what's the point of sending them out on loan, putting them on a contract and then sending them out on loan? Well, look, quite simply, because if they do well on loan, it gets takes them one step closer to maybe making it in the senior team. But if they don't do well, then what does that say about the players? Now, I think there are big uh, hopes, massive hopes for the likes of Freddie Potts, uh, for the likes of uh, Swire, several others, Mbama, etc. There's quite a few players uh, in the um, in the academy, in the development squad that are looking like really, really good prospects. So it kind of makes sense to send these players out on loan. If they do really well, then what next? Okay, what about Dave Okarigi? Well, Dave Okarigi is arriving in London on Saturday with his agent. Um, And it can only mean one thing, that a London club, possibly a London club, a Premier League club, has put a bid in for him. Now, Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is no breaking news or anything like that. I, no, the information I've been given about uh, Origi coming is pretty valid because uh, the person that told me about it um, is quite close to, you know, Origi arriving. Um, and now I'm not saying he's coming to West Ham, but um, he lands in Heathrow uh, around about midday today. And it's quite possible he will then go with his agent to speak to a club that's put a bid in for him. So who's likely to have uh, put a bid in? Well, let's look at the Premier League clubs around London um, in alphabetical order that may be interested. There's, of course, Brentford, 
uh, who've yet to find a replacement striker for Ivan Tony, who's been banned from football for around eight months, etc. We all know that, and that was uh, that came into immediate effect from May, uh, and so that means he's going to be out till what mid January, end of January, something like that. So there's a good chance that Brentford might be interested in having Origi come in to fill that role. Then there's, of course, Crystal Palace, uh, who will be looking for a replacement for Wilfred Zaha, who left on a free transfer to Galatasaray. I'm really surprised he's gone there. But anyway, so again, uh, Origi uh, could fit that criteria to replace uh, Zaha. And then, of course, we've got Fulham, who, although they purchased Raul Jimenez from Wolves, they probably want another option uh, in someone like Origi to fill the gap that's going to be vacated by Alexandra Mitrovic, who seems quite uh, likely to be heading to Saudi Arabia. I don't know if that deal's done or not, but that's the uh, that's the story. And then we have ourselves, of course. Um, we've got uh, West Ham United, um, where you know we've had a chance of signing Origi in the past. You know, I'd said this several times before. When he was at Liverpool, we had an option to sign him, but it didn't materialise. And then when he became a free agent before he went to uh, AC Milan, we had that option to sign him, sign him as a free agent, but we didn't uh, didn't look like we were interested there either. So I've got to be honest. I just wonder whether he is coming to West Ham or not. Look. There is, of course, the, the, the whole interest in um, uh, apparently Scamacca going back to Italy. We, we keep hearing story after story after story that Italian clubs want him. Uh, uh, Roma, of course, who can't afford him. And then now there's Inter Milan, who apparently look like they may make a bid for him. So it's possible that Origi may be coming to West Ham. I did say a few days ago, I don't think it will happen. You know, for the mere fact, like I meant, just mentioned, that we had opportunities to sign him in the past, but we didn't take those opportunities up. So is he coming to West Ham? I think maybe, you know, when the Brentford, Fulham, Crystal Palace have anything to do with it, there might be a, a, a bit of a, t a tug of war for the likes of Origi. He's not a bad player. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if one of those three clubs, or us, us included, I guess the reason why I've mentioned Origi is because we're the only club at the moment that have been linked to him. You know, we're the only club that have been rumoured to be sort of interested in him for something like an £8 million deal, etc. Look, if he came, I, 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 I don't know. I, there was a time when I would have loved Origi to arrive at West Ham. You know, he did really well uh, from the bench, mainly when he was at Liverpool. You know, a pretty natural goal scorer, etc. And uh, there may have been a time when I would have favoured uh, having a player like Origi coming. Do I want him now? I'm not so sure. He's not done well at AC Milan. I think he's only scored something like two or three goals uh, in the season that he's been there. So it's kind of no surprise that they're looking to maybe moving on. But he's got Premier League experience. He can certainly do a role. Do I think it will be good enough for West Ham United? Like I said, at one point in the in the past, I did think that. I'm not so sure now. But that's the story. Uh, Origi will be arriving in London uh, with his agent uh, on Saturday and uh, looking to probably finalise a deal with a club that's maybe put a bid in for him. West Ham United could be one of them. But like I said, Brentford may be another to replace Tony. Fulham may be another to replace Mitrovic. And Crystal Palace could be yet another um, to replace Saha. But watch this space. Let's see what happens. Short and sweet. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, have great fun, whatever you're planning to do. Don't get too anxious about West Ham United. I'm sure we will end up signing players, no doubt about it. You know, and I know there's uh, only two weeks to go before the first game. Um, you know, we're playing Rennes uh, later on today. Let's see how that goes with uh, all our uh, international players back. That'll be interesting to see what sort of lineup Moyes puts out. We've only got two more friendly games now. We're against Rennes on, uh, today and and then there's Bayer Leverkusen next weekend as well before we kick off the, the season uh, away to Bournemouth. Uh, we will get players in. Will we get any players in before Bournemouth, the Bournemouth game? That I don't know. You know, Borges sounds like he's, um, uh, he's a dead cert, but then he's been a dead cert for two weeks. Uh, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, where Borges goes. Does he go into the senior squad or does he go into the academy squad, the under-21s? That will be very, very interesting because... Uh, it, it kind of in a way won't surprise me if Borges does go into the into the uh into the under 21s let's see though 14 million pounds for a player to go into the under 21s doesn't seem right does it so i'm kind of guessing that um perhaps he will be in the senior squad and then when it comes to skamaka leaving etc and maybe the whole Origi thing do we have enough cover 
you know, if Skamaka goes, I kind of feel that we probably may do. There are no st strikers uh, on the horizon that have been mentioned throughout the, the summer transfer window so far, apart from Origi. Um, yeah, there's been a few sort of loose stories, but they've come as soon as they've come, they've gone as well. You know, but we, you know, maybe, maybe Borges is coming in to fill that gap. Maybe, uh, as has been rumoured, Corne is likely to play a more central role this season, as well as maybe Bowen. Maybe Borges is coming in to play on the left side in order to allow the likes of Corne and uh, Bowen to play more centrally. So it'd be interesting to see what happens there. But we will get players. We will get players without a shadow of a doubt. Will we get players before the, uh, the first game of the season? Who knows? But certainly we will end up getting players through the door. Thank you for having, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're new to, new to the channel, please do hit the like, subscribe and bell notification to let you know when I'm next on. Like I said, have a great weekend. Don't get stressed about West Ham and I'll see you all on the Monday night uh, West Ham weekly show. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all soon.